Hey everybody, happy Thursday to you. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. Now we have a lot of big changes about to take place starting Friday. Now we do have this meteor shower that is gonna be a big spectacular event. I have all the information you need on that. Plus what's going over here in the Northwest. You have a lot of fires, especially in Washington. Washington has a lot of fires and a lot of that is about to be taken care of. Whether it's gonna be rain or snow, you are getting precipitation, some moisture in your area, and it should help with this problem. Now, first of all, we have the Southern Torrids. Now, this is active from September 28th through December 2nd. Now, this will give you a lot of chances of seeing meteor showers. First, we have the Southern Torrids. It's active from September 28th all the way to December 2nd, but the peak is on November 4th and 5th at night. And we also have the Northern Torrids. It's active all the way from October 13th all the way to December 2nd. But the peak of this one will be November 11th through the 12th at night. But first we have the Orionids. This is active from September 26th all the way to November 22nd. Now the peak of this one will be October 20th and 21st, where you can see a lot of meteors. Now the Orionids can produce 10 to 20 showers, but the biggest one that it had was 2006 through 2009. It actually produced 50 to 75 an hour. Now the best time to see the Orionids is going to be for tomorrow, the 21st. Get up at one o'clock in the morning all the way till dawn and you will see the meteors passing by. Now there's a lot of fires in the Northwest, but Washington has a lot of fires going on and we have a big pattern shift that's about to happen. Hopefully it will help you out with the situation. Now, right now we're going into a positive pattern. That's where you have this big high ridge on the West Coast. You get all the warm temperatures, cool air coming to the Southeast. We're about to be into a negative pattern and this pattern has expanded where you get multiple systems coming through the Northwest, bring a lot of cold temperatures. I'm showing it's gonna be all the way until November. And at the same time, you will be warm and dry from the center to the east coast of the US. And as you take a look at the Pacific North American pattern with the GFS and the Euro, you can see we're about to switch right now and go into this deep negative pattern. And it is gonna stick around through the end of October, the beginning of November. You can see this also with the Euro, a big negative pattern, strong negative pattern, all the way to the beginning of November. And this is gonna begin as everything comes to a head. So first off, we have this big system come through the Northwest still, bringing rainfall and heavy snow in higher elevations. We still have this cutoff low in the Southwest. We still have this hurricane going through the Eastern Pacific. I have your impacts for you. Remember all the links are in the description to help save you time and to bring up the information again as you need it. As you get this low pressure off the East Coast, still showing no severe impacts. As this comes together, it's going to be a big monster of a storm, bring in some very heavy winds, some very cold wind chills as well, but this is going to bring some severe weather all the way to the upper Midwest and Ohio Valley as well. But if you look in the Northwest, you'll see that this pattern is going to continue as we go through the end of October and the beginning of November, just one after another coming to the Northwest. So hopefully this does help you with your precipitation. I know it will help you with your drought that you are in, but I do hope it helps put out all them fires y'all are dealing with. And a lot of this is starting with Tropical Depression 19E over here, and it will be a next name storm. It will be a hurricane. Matter of fact, it has potential to get up to a Cat 2 hurricane. It's right on the edge as it goes towards Mexico. And so far, National Hurricane Center does have it becoming a hurricane and then weakening down towards a tropical storm. Now this system will be north and west side loaded. So even though it's coming close to Mexico, the eastern side of this system don't have the impacts. It will be further along up the coast. So remember, I do have these links in the description for you guys so you can plan a little better. And you can see according to National Hurricane Center that it does have a chance to become a Cat 2 hurricane, 104 miles per hour by Sunday, then becoming a tropical storm by Monday. But you can also see with the wind accumulation that most of it will be in the Eastern Pacific. It's not going to really hurt Puerto Vallarta, but as you go further up the road, you can see where the impacts are really going to start coming on landfall 
as it goes further up the coast. Also with the rainfall, it's not going to be a lot until it gets further up the coast because it's going to be west side and north side loaded. So if you're in Mexico, please share this information so people can zoom into the area and see what their rainfall totals are, what the wind gust potential is with this system so you can be best prepared. Now, as of the 8 o'clock update with National Hurricane Center on the Atlantic, there's still nothing expected in the next five days, but that is going to change soon. And you can see this from the update from Global Tropics. All these links are in the description for you. From October 26th through November 1st, when we have all that lifted at the end of October, something is expected in the Caribbean. But with all these cold fronts we're getting, I'm still showing we have all that hurricane repellent for the U.S., but this will impact the Caribbean. And you can see with your precipitate water as you go from 24th to 25th that something does form up in the Caribbean. And so far it can impact Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, and maybe Turks and Caicos and portions of the Bahamas as we get these cold fronts and keep that at bay from the lower 48 of the U.S. But it does get a low pressure system. It tries to strengthen up to a tropical depression by the 26th, heads north, don't really get to the tropical storm status. It does try, but it has a lot of problems with these cold fronts as it continues to go by. So we will continue to monitor this, make sure that there's no additional strengthening, but so far it is no really severe impacts, but some rainfall is coming out of this. And you can see the whole setup when you look at all of North America. So you have your Tropical Depression 19 becoming a hurricane in Eastern Pacific. We have our trough coming in with this strong system bringing very much damaging winds. It's been showing damaging winds for a long time. As that strengthens up, goes on that higher ridge to upper Midwest, it will be putting some rain and snowfall on a wraparound as it meets up with these cold temperatures that it pulls down on the west side. But it's pretty much going to hit the brakes because all this warm temperatures right here is going to turn that snowfall into rain and severe weather as well. And you also can see that portions of that tail does come across the south and the southeast strengthen up a little bit as a low pressure and bring some more rainfall to the south. As you get that system in the Caribbean at the same time, there's so many things going on at one time, it is unbelievable. And the update with the wind gusts shows a lot of powerful winds. It's been showing this steady day after day. So here's the new impacts. Now this is still gonna be widespread 40 miles per hour wind gusts, but it is gonna be a lot of 50 and 60 as well in the higher elevations of Colorado and New Mexico is still showing 70, 80, even a chance for up to 90. It is going to strengthen up as it goes on this high ridge. This high ridge is what's going to strengthen this storm as it heads north. It will also bring 40 miles per hour wind gusts to the west side of the country and 50 and possibly 60 along the coast as this system comes in. But higher elevations like California, I know y'all in a drought, you're not going to be getting a lot of rainfall from this but there is some high winds, 60 and 70 or higher in your higher elevation. So just be aware, this is gonna be impacting a lot of people. It's not going too far to the east, but this is a big and strong system. Now, as it goes up on that high ridge on Sunday, it will bring some severe weather. So far, I'm showing large hail, but you do have a 15% chance for Omaha, Nebraska, Council Bluffs, Iowa, Bellevue, Nebraska, Fort Dodge, Iowa, and Papillion, Nebraska. And you can see as it goes into Sunday evening, once you get to Sunday night, it's really going to blow up to a lot of lightning strikes. Now, all this white is indicative to large hail. Now, this is South Dakota, Nebraska, Iowa, southern Minnesota, even northern Kansas as it goes to 7 p.m. at night and then cools down after that. Still bringing thunderstorms, but your chances for large hail will be Sunday night, all the way from 7 o'clock, all the way till possibly midnight. But this is bringing a lot of moisture. So we'll be bringing a lot of precipitation, mostly about two inches to the northwest, to your main towns, Portland, Oregon, over here in Washington. You mainly gonna get about two inches of rainfall in the next 10 days. The next five days is only gonna be an inch. So it's not a massive amount of precipitation. Hopefully it will be enough to help with your fires. But you can see how you get all this precipitation that is building up and there is going to be snowfall out of this. It's just not going to be all snowfall. You can see in the higher elevations is definitely getting a lot of snowfall. But your main cities like Denver, Portland, Seattle, all these main towns are pretty much going to get no snowfall. You might get half an inch, get some flurries, but it is going to be a lot of mixed precipitation. 
And you can see this from National Weather Service. So as we go into tomorrow, you have rainfall, also a lot of mixed precipitation. Also, as you go into Saturday, it is going to grow with a bigger area for mixed precipitation. There's going to be snowfall. There's going to be rainfall as well. But there's going to be a lot of mixed precipitation Friday and Saturday. But remember, I do have the link in the description on your wind gust so you can see what's going on and exactly what your impacts could be as this system passes by. So please use the links so you can best prepare for what this system is going to do. But you can see with the rainfall amounts the next five days, it's not bringing a lot, hardly an inch to Seattle, over an inch in Portland. But in the next 10 days of this pattern, then it's going to bring a couple of inches of rainfall y'all way. Higher elevations, it will be snowfall, but hopefully this does help you all out with your fire. This link is in the description so you can zoom in and see what your impacts could be. And I also have this link for you too, so you can see what your timing is. So you can see when this snowfall is coming in and what your potential impacts could be from it. It's not going to be a lot for the main cities like I've been saying for days, but those that are getting snow, make sure you zoom in so you can see what your impacts can be and when this is coming in. But thank you so much for your time today. I hope you have a very blessed Thursday out there. One more day and we are on a Friday. So God bless all of you and your families. Psalm. 14. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that doeth good. The Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand and seek God. They are all gone aside. They are all together become filthy. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. Have all the workers of iniquity no knowledge, who eat up my people as they eat bread, and call not upon the Lord? There were they in great fear, for God is in the generation of the righteous. Ye have shamed the counsel of the poor, because the Lord is his refuge. O oh, that the salvation of Israel were come out of Zion, when the Lord bringeth back the captivity of his people. Jacob shall rejoice and Israel shall be glad. Amen. <laughs> God bless all of you. Hope you have a very blessed day today. Above all things, remember, the control is not in our hands. All glory does go to God, our Father in heaven. And may he bless every single one of you, every day of your life. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Have a great Thursday, everybody.